Joining us now to talk more about the president's economic message is White House economist Jared Bernstein. He is a member of the president's Council of Economic Advisors. And Jared, it's good to see you this morning. Um, you too, Becky. Thanks. Let's jump in right away Let's. on some of the things I think that Wall Street is focused on. First of all, he talked about quadrupling the tax on stock buybacks. He talked about this wealth tax on unrealized gains in the stock market. And the people we've been speaking with this morning think both of those proposals are, are dead on arrival. Would that be your assessment? Not necessarily. Uh, everything in Washington tends to be dead on arrival until the day when it isn't. So these things can uh, turn around quickly. And I think one of the key messages there, the president underscored it numerous times in what I just thought was a blockbuster State of the Union last night, uh, was that in order to uh, build on the deficit uh, reduction we've achieved thus far, it's essential uh, that uh, wealthy corporations pay their fair share. No one under 400000 will see their taxes go up by one penny, uh, but the days of uh, uh, the top 1 percent paying less than uh, teachers and uh, nurses, uh, th those have got to be behind us as, as we inject fairness into the tax code to achieve fiscal rectitude. Hey, Jerry, going after income taxes and making sure that people are paying appropriate mm. income taxes is one thing, but this tax that was proposed on billionaires, and by the way, it's for anybody who has $100 million or more, nobody wants to look like they're defending the very wealthiest of the wealthy, but what you're talking about is a very different tax, going after gains uh, or unrealized gains on investments, on stocks <clears> and other things. I mean, that, that, is a, that is a horse of a whole different color, and it, it, it would make a difference to people who are just average people who have yeah. money like that if eventually it's changed. It's just a different taxation. This is you, not an you, income let me, tax. Let me so, respond you, to you, that. You gotta, it's not 1 percent. You know that. And, and that sophistry, you know it is, because you know that the top 1 It's the top 1 one hundredth of the top 1 percent. Well, that's but let what me you said. That's not hold, what you on. said. The top Let me respond. You guys are talking two different things. What, what, the, Hold the on. Wealth tax it's not the top, the, the, you're talking the about the billionaire tax. It doesn't pay yeah. less than what you said. It's not true. The no. top one. Sorry, wait a second. Not. I think We're you're conflating things, a number guys. of issues. Yeah. So, so the uh, the billionaire's tax um, only affects people above 100 million right. of AGI. Right. one percent. You just the, made that statement. That and the that's the top one percent. That's the top one one hundredth of the top one percent. But look, I want to start, Becky. I want to start where you started. Yeah. The idea of funding the IRS so they can go after the wealthiest tax evaders just yeah, makes tremendous sense to us. Yeah, I, so you have no problem I, with I that. Don't, I don't have a problem with that. This, I don't have a problem I know with you have raising no, well, hold taxes. On, Becky, hold on, let me, let me make this point. I have a problem point. with unrealized you, gains. We'll get into taxed. that. We'll definitely get into that. You think that you have no problem with that. One of the first bills the House Republicans passed when they got into office was repealing precisely that funding for the IRS. Now, that adds $114 billion to the deficit, according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. Why? To allow wealthy tax evaders to cheat on their taxes. That's not okay with this president. I'm glad that's not okay with you. Now, let's talk about the billionaire's tax. This is a tax. You called it a wealth tax on unrealized gains. In fact, what it, what it really is, or at least the way we see it, is a prepayment or a withholding tax <laughs> on future capital gains. And so in make, that sense... You might make down the road if the stock market doesn't turn around, if you don't see a bubble burst, if you don't see anything that happens. That's my problem with it. It's not an income tax. It's a, a tax on gains that you may have at some point or you may not. That's a, that's right. a whole and different if you, of issue. If you achieve those gains... Then you pay. Then you you make good on that prepayment. If you don't, you don't have to. So, uh, the the rules of the tax uh, actually protect people with capital losses. But what they finally do yeah, is they get us to. Sell. And by the way, it, it is a minimum tax. If you're uh, if you earn over a hundred billion, I'm uh, sorry, over a hundred million dollars, and you're not paying twenty percent on your taxes, this minimum but, but tax catches up. But it's not twenty percent on your you. taxes.